well, stay empty, because you are also empty. Before you touch these things, you are empty. As a matter of fact, even after you touch these things, you are empty. But you don't believe it anymore, because you take the colour of the things you touch, and you start to believe in them, rather than yourself. You say, how to, how to become empty? You started off from empty. Hmm? You always started from nothing. You did not start from something. You start from nothing. I wonder who I have seen this. When you take rest, when you have total rest, where do you go to? Isn't it to emptiness? Isn't your mind full of knowledge, too much data, too many things to do, too much noise? Oh, I've got to get away. Where you go? Hmm? Suppose you're working in the city, you know, big, big job, full on <laughs> stock exchange. You're working every day. When you go holiday, where you go? Las Vegas? <laughs> Don't you go to Jamaica? <laughs> Don't you go to some place quiet, some place nice, chill out a little bit, be in the water? Like that, relax. Don't you want to go to something peaceful? Hmm? And some people realize that if they want holiday, they can simply just be totally present. The best holiday you're going to have. You ask how to be. Even this question is a fraud, because if you believe it. Is going to send you on a trip of techniques. How to be empty? I tell you, stay empty. <laughs> don't pick up anything. Don't touch anything. Don't pick up anything right now. Hmm? You have no pockets. You have nowhere to put anything. You start off empty. Don't touch anything, not out of fear. Of course, you can read the newspaper, you can watch TV and be very empty. You know, anybody know this? You can watch TV, and if you watch TV empty, you enjoy the best TV. <laughs> because I, sometimes I'm inside. I, my friend was my remote controller. I'd play. I watching something like some football, and I'm enjoying, enjoying, enjoying. But when the goal is scored, I don't find myself going, ah! No, no, I just feel, mm, nice. But full joy, full joy. Then maybe some friends would come into the room and they start to watch, and they totally disturb my enjoyment. Because they want to talk, you know, who is the best player and so on. Not even anything that's there now. Just like they do with life anyway. They make up things, make up things. Make up things. You're right in front, you know. You're right in front of your breakfast, and you're talking about lunch. How is I do it? You are already empty. Hmm? Look at everything. If you are living from your heart, then your life becomes quite spontaneous. You know. You don't have to plan anything. It becomes so beautiful. That when somebody invites you to go into some plan, you immediately feel, Ugh, why would I do that? It's such a clutter. Why? I don't know. How you can ask me what I'm going to have for lunch tomorrow? <laughs> what a crazy question. Why would I even think about it? You see? Unless you're going for lunch with a Prime Minister or something, it has to be at one o'clock, and this is the choice you have, then you say, OK, I endure. You see, but why, why else would you do it? Your li life will unfold beautifully. Of course, there's a time to use your mind and to make plans, but something informs you from your being. It knows when to do this. I really would love to invite you, but you won't accept. So the only way I know is to try and get you back into yourself, and everything will just be just fine. <laughs> If you want, how to cut this this whole habit? How to cut this connection to the old regime? 
of going back to the mind for everything, how to do it. You see? And then even in your question, how to do it, it is already affirming that your connection is intact. It is subtle. I'm teaching, not teaching English now. I'm teaching <laughs> common sense. You know, if you say, you know, how can I, how can I break this connection? It means that you have a connection, and the connection is only habit. Actually, you can say, but I show you something that is there before habit, during habit, after habit. It is still there, untouched. And all that has to happen, not only that you see it. But that you value it. You see from this place. You experience. Not you don't see it like you see it from a book. You see it from experience. You experience it, and then you say, "Wow! Oh, I am so free. I am so free. I am so. Oh, thank you, thank you. This is fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you so love it." Suppose you meet someone on a date, you go out, or accidentally you meet someone, and you really hit it off. You really like this person. They, they like you. You 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 say, you know, okay, can we exchange numbers? You, they say, yeah. You say, yeah. You say, oh, you exchange numbers. You have a selfie with them. <laughs> it still looks good. The next morning, it looks good, and everything. You say, oh my God, you know. And then they send you a message, little text, you know. You are extraordinarily beautiful. <gasps> what? You send you too. <laughs> and look how you are feeling already. Somebody you only met yesterday, okay? And then in a few days, you are madly in love. I am going to ask you something. Does anybody have to remind you to remember this person? No. Your whole life, all day is filled. Supermarket, bathroom, anywhere you go, you are still. <laughs> You can't wait. This is how we love phenomenally, meaning you love somebody, which is basically from the reflection of your own energy. How much you are going to love something that kills death in you? How much you are going to love the one who shows you eternal life? How much are you going to love the one who takes away your sorrows and suffering like that? How much are you going to love the one, that one, who never leaves you, who is never disappointed with you? How much are you going to love that? I would think very much. But then there is another force inside you, as soon as you find that beloved, you find a very much an unbeloved in you, who is saying, huh. And somehow some battle begins in you. Like something wants you to be just Miss Flat, Miss Ordinary, Mr. Average, Mr. Sufferer. Okay? And this voice you know very well, very well. It talks to you like a friend, but it cannot be trusted. And you find that very often, like a reflex, you are standing holding the hand of this same one. And the Beloved is saying, Well, I am here. Oh, oh, sorry. So, well, you can't be with both of us. Uh, oh, OK, OK, I stay with you. So it is a place like a game. You ask a question, I am telling you the most honest way. How can I break the connection with or the habit? I will tell you that you find a thing which instantly shows you that you are free from this habit and you begin to value it. How to value it, I cannot tell you. You must already have that with you. That much you must already have. That you are capable of discerning what is righteous and what is unrighteous for you. That the minute you see, ah, oh my God, oh, then you can ask, hey, Muji, how can I stay here? Please, I don't want to go back there 
I don't want to go, how I can stay here? And I'll ask you, how are you staying here now? And you say, well, actually, I'm not doing anything. And I say, that's just the way you stay here now. If you love it, you'll just be here. If you listen to your mind, you start to doubt. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not worthy enough. Maybe I need to do some yoga. Maybe I need to go and sit naked in a cave. Maybe I have to do all these things. And you believe this voice, and boom, you're out. And then you come and say, Boji, how can I get back? Like this. 